Flynn here. All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless me here again, talking today about real music. Today, it's like the ultimate in real music and doing it for real people just like you. Of course, doing it in real time. Man, I messed up my intro. Anyway, Brian Cole is here with me today. Brian Cole, the legendary singer, songwriter, producer, arranger, all around nice guy too. Uh, and uh, actually sang vocals for Giant at one point. And uh, it is is just kind of like um, a really cool person. Brian, welcome back, buddy. How are you? Thank you, brother. Doing great. How you doing? Well, I'm stuttering here, so. <laughs> I haven't, and I haven't had any alcohol. Just want to make that clear. Yeah, it's a little well, early. Well, that's okay. I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm enjoying some coffee right now. So, uh, all right. The, no, the alcohol no. probably come later. Co coffee with Jack, or just, just straight. <laughs> no, up? just, just straight coffee. Right. Good know. for you, man. You're not living the rock star life. So, uh, <laughs> you have this band. We haven't had you on since uh, this band really got established. Um, you were working on some stuff. You were kicking around different names and what kind of music you're going to do, but you guys have put together a really cool band called Chain Reaction. Tell us about Chain Reaction. Chain Reaction um, was uh, was around. They, they've been around for a long time, probably about 10 years. Um, and the, the former guitarist of the band and I were in a band together when I was like right out of high school. And uh, he had called me up and said, you know, hey, our, our, our singer, um, it has to leave. And uh, would you be interested in just coming over and jamming? Yeah. I said, sure, you know, it'd be fun. So I uh, went over and it was like old times. I mean, uh, the, the other guys are just wonderful. I, I love them dearly. And, and um, they're just, they're, they're, you know, I like to say that the Chain Reaction's more, more than just a band. I, I mean, it's a family. It really is. Cool. I mean, these guys are my brothers through thick and thin, and uh, and and I love them dearly. Wow. Um, the uh, we have such a chemistry that I, I remember uh, the first song we jammed to was "Stone in Love" from from Nice. Ken. nice. And uh, so he, so the other guitar player had said, you know, what do you what do you want to start with? I said, well, let's start. With, he says, how about, how about something easy? And I said, okay, okay, how about how about "Stone in Love"? And he goes, that's easy for you? And I went, well, uh, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, you know. And um, he, he goes, you do it in the original key? I said, yeah. And, and he said, okay, I got to hear this, you know. <laughs> and, um, and we started jamming it and, and it just felt really, really good. Yeah. And um, at the time, we were, we were doing a little more classic rock stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But we found that you know, we're all big 80s, you know, hair metal guys, you know, yep. to, to the bone, you know, and, right. and um, so we thought, you know, there's a void that that's missing where, you know, you, you have one tribute band, like an A Journey tribute band or A Foreigner tribute band or A whatever. Yeah. And um, we said, why not, why not be that 80s rock jukebox? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. literally, give the people what they want. And, yeah. and I know that sounds cliche, but yeah. um, it, it really is giving the people what they want and people are loving it. I mean, uh, you know, even, uh, you know, we do sweet child of mine from, from guns and roses. And the minute they start hearing that, I mean, they go crazy, you yeah. know? Um, so it's really a joy to, uh, to sing the songs that I grew up to. And, um, and still enjoy to this day, you yeah. know, um, it, it's, it's fantastic. And, uh, and I love it. And I've been in the band now for, uh, going on five years. Okay. All right. So this yeah. is, yeah. So you were working on kind of like an, a journey only thing, but, um, yeah. And, and I really, honest to God, I, I really wanted that to work out. Unfortunately, two of the guys that were in the band, uh, were in another band that just is exploding right now and they're yeah. doing so well and I'm so happy for them. Um, so it just time and all that kind of stuff. It just, it, it wasn't working. Um, 
you know me. I mean, I, I Journey is my band, and that uh, I, I shouldn't say that. You know, I don't want to get in trouble with Neil, but uh, or or Dean, but uh, you know, it's like Journey is my favorite band. Yeah. Let me say that. Yeah. And um, you know, I, ever since I was a kid, you know, it's something that that I've always dreamt to be a part of. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and and always sang. You know, from from uh, when I got the Infinity record and I uh, heard something to hide you know yeah. that was it you know it was yeah. like that's it you know I'm, sure. I'm sold you know so um so with that said uh that didn't you know it just wasn't coming together and chain reaction i mean this is this is the busiest year we've had yeah and, and god bless it because it, it's it, you know playing bigger places we we just played an amphitheater almost four thousand people wow and it was intense. It was absolutely big amphitheater outside. Mm -hmm. It was great, you yeah. know, and, uh, and we had a blast. They treated us great. Um, you know, big shout out to, uh, to the town of Greensburg, Pennsylvania, man. God bless yeah. them. They were amazing. Yeah, absolutely amazing. That's cool. That's cool. So, um, you know, one of the things I can talk about, because I did a video on this recently, is um, with an economy the way it is right now, there are a lot of people that feel a little bit left out of the concert scene. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, I went to go buy four new tickets the other day. It's kind of like an exercise to see, you know, what I could get and where I'd be sitting. And I was way you up. You have to take out a loan. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. and it's deceiving because you put the tickets in the cart and you're right around 130 bucks. And then you go to check out and you're at 247 bucks. And I'm sitting... I'm sorry. I mean, for two, some people, 247, Brian, is like, hey, you know, I got this in my, you know, you know what I mean? So it's like, I, people are, I yeah, people are having a hard time feeding their families. Right. And people are having a hard time putting fuel in their, in their vehicle okay. to go to work. And sure. yeah, music is, is an outlet for them. I mean, obviously we're, we're in this business to make money, but, yeah. but we also, we have to take into consideration that we're providing a service and we're not, we're not curing cancer. Mm -hmm. We're not, you know what I mean? Right, so right. I, I, you. I, you know, look, I, I mean, God, God bless it. If you, if, if you can, if, if you could justify charging a hundred bucks a ticket and, and people come and see you, I mean, God bless it. That's great. Yeah. Um, we're, we're not that bad. Yeah. You know, no, I, and I'm, what I'm saying though, is that it's, you guys are obviously a great alternative. You know, if you're putting 4,000 people, uh, you know, in a, in an amphitheater and you're selling, you know, tickets for, I know one year shows, it said $7 for a ticket, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, actually mean, this Saturday, the, the show, we, we don't do a lot of ticketed shows, which is, which is great. You know, I mean, yeah. and so that way anybody can come and see us. Right. Um, some shows that we do um, are ticketed shows, but, but we keep the price at around seven to $10. Um, that way, anybody can come and see us and enjoy themselves and not break the bank. You yeah. know, they can still, you know, take their wife or girlfriend out for dinner and then right. come to a show yeah. um, and enjoy maybe having a couple of drinks while you're there or whatever, and not, not have to go, Oh my God, how are we going to do this? You know, how are we yeah. going to afford this? So, yeah. Well, I think that's great. And obviously um, this band, you're, you're pretty much like a brotherhood, you said, and in addition to that, you've got really strong musicians in this band and you, you kind of, you gave yourself a bit of a compliment at the beginning when the guy asked you, Hey, are you going to sing this in the original key? And that's a big thing for me. I mean, a lot of these bands, I'm not going to name names, but you know, we know the, the scene, um, they're half step down. A lot of people don't hear it. They don't, you know, they don't pick up on it. Um, you know, if you go back and listen to the song or watch the video or whatever, you go, hmm, your brain does something where you're like, this sounds a little bit different. What's going on? I mean, when you play Stone in Love or any of those 80s songs, it, it requires that you can sing. And it's this isn't just like me being a real, you know, hard ass about it. It's it's disappointing. It's I mean, when you hear a band, and you're paying all. First of all, I just made the point that you're paying all this money. Now, Foreigner's got Kelly Hansen, so I'm not going to... Oh, Kelly's great. Yeah, Kelly, yeah. Kelly uh, we had a little debate going back and forth, me and 
you know, some other interviews and stuff that was going on. And I just said, look, Kelly, what do you, you know, everybody, you can't, you, no one's going to be Lou. That's not the point. But Never. Kelly, yeah. Kelly is phenomenal. He's been there 17 years. He does sing everything in the right key. No. Um, yeah. You know, and I think that's that if you're going to go see Foreigner, at least you're going to get a representation. You know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. if you go it, see it, Chain Reaction, you're going to get a representation of all this you are, and the and you know, and, and all the all the guys in the band. I mean, they're they're all incredible musicians, and and they love what they do. Um, you know, they they all have their influences. Um, Bill Worley, for example, um, we we have two guitarists in the band, a bass player um, that also plays keys. Um, sometimes I fill in on keys, you know, while we're doing a, a, a couple songs, but um, and we got a a drummer named Craig Phillips that man, he is just, he's incredible. I mean, he really, he's in the pocket all the time, you know, yeah. and um, you know, but Bill Worley is, I mean, you talk about influence by people like George Lynch and Eddie Van Halen. And I mean, he nails it. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. That's cool. Between George Lynch, Vito Brada and, and, in, in Edward Van Halen, God rest his soul. Mm -hmm. um, that's Bill Worley right there. Wow. That's his influences. Yeah. And and then you take Pat Leoparty, who's the other guitarist that has a bit of a different style. Now he, he loves Van Halen, obviously, but, but he has an approach where he, he reminds me a lot of Doug Aldridge when he plays, Yeah, you know, I and like uh, he yeah. plays a Les Paul and he, you know, and he, and he is, phenomenal i mean yeah. absolutely phenomenal we all sing so there's there's just background vocals you know all the harmonies and everything like that are are spot on and um you know paul paul raschuti for for those who remember us in murano uh paul was the bass player in murano all right so uh when we toured with tesla and did shows with firehouse um that was the bass player so uh cool Paul and I go back. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have, we, we have great road stories to tell. Trust me. Yeah. Um, nice. But uh, so, you know, it's, it's a well-rounded band. Everyone has fun on stage. And I think that that's probably the biggest compliment that, that you could get is thank you for making this fun. Thank mm. you for bringing me back to when I was 25 years old. You know what I mean? And yeah. Yep. You know, and it, you could tell that you guys are having fun on stage and, and, and we are, I mean, the antics that are going on, the little, the little, the little things that are being said during guitar solos and stuff like that, that the public doesn't even hear. Yeah. We have fun. We right. have a blast. And I think that's reflected in, in the music that we play and the shows that we play, because that that music i mean let, let, let's call it what it is that music was very fun mm -hmm. and it was in and it was an era of fun right and we want to bring that experience to people when they come and see us that you're not just going to see five guys on stage just standing there you know yeah you know yeah so i know what you, mean. Uh, you know but you're not going to see that you yeah. know you're going to see us jumping around acting like a bunch of unhinged animals that are hungry for fresh meat. Nice. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, that's uh, put that that's on it. a t-shirt. That would have been a, 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 you should sell swag with that, you know, chain reaction running around like a, we a, actually do. You know, the funny thing is we actually have brand new merchandise and, and that? it's so funny um, to me because I didn't think we would sell it. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I Dude, just, you're going to have to send me an XL down, down. Okay. To Florida if All right. We'll do. Because you know, you know what? I get people that are sending me stuff. Put this in a video, put this in the back. I mean, I, I wear a shirt and it's apparently it's a big deal. People are all like, Hey, uh, what was that shirt you were in the other day? I'd said this and I couldn't read all of it. So yeah. yeah, free. I mean, look, I am in Florida. You're in Pennsylvania. You know, it's too bad, but um, you never know. I regionally, there are people that watch and people in Europe, people all over the place. Well, you never, I, I think you too know. that, you know, it, it's, um, you know, we're not unreachable 
by, you know, like if, it, you know, for people that are in Ohio, in New York, um, in, in West Virginia, you know, I, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's not, it's not that bad. I mean, we, sure. we um, but we, we would like to do more things regionally in terms of in the Ohio, Virginia, DC, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, we would love to hit those areas. Yeah. So honestly, I mean, open call. If, if any fans out there want to hear this and want to see this, um, let us know or, or call the club and let them know that, that, um, you want to see us and, and, um, you can reach us, go to chainreactionrock.com. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we're on, we're on Facebook and, and all that kind of stuff. Perfect. And, um, yeah, just, just, let us know. I mean, we, we really want to bring this experience to, to everyone and, and whether it's at a theater show or an outside festival or a, a, a nice size club, whatever. Um, we, we love to do it. You know, yeah. we just, we love to do it. Well, and this is what's great about this is that I love talking to somebody who's in it for the music, mm -hmm. uh, who loves the era you i mean just talking about it it just it's just warms your heart you know you're yeah. like here's a fellow traveler you know who's, yeah. who's into the same uh who lived through the same thing you know i talk a lot about lived experiences because that's kind of what i know mm -hmm. and because i'm a bit older people are like hey you can't just make fun of all the people that didn't experience what you experienced uh, i'm not i'm just telling you where i was what i was I mean, dude, you go to see Journey in 1981, right? What what's what tops that? There's nothing. There's you can you can roll Steve Perry out right now, right? He it's not the same. I I love him. I love this band. I like you say, um, Neil Sean still has got the goods. Everybody is great in this band, but Journey in 1981, Foreigner in 1981. Same sticks in nineteen eighty one. I mean, that could be the pinnacle well, year. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there, there there was certainly something in the water. Yeah, um, Lover Boy in nineteen eighty one. Yeah, you could go on. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Survivor. All yeah, of, you know, and Dave Bickler. You know, the yeah. Eye of the Tiger Boy. Right. See, I was, I, and honestly, and I and I love Dave. And Dave, if, if you're listening, love your brother. But. I, um, you know, Jimmy, I know. Let's talk. Jimmy, Jimmy Chase. Jimmy is, and, and and I have I have a really really uh, cool story um, regarding that. So, Jimmy and I never had the opportunity to meet, and yeah. um, everyone that knew Jimmy that knows me were like, "Oh my God, you two together would have just been a hoot." You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, because we had very similar personalities, but. Um, so I was working with, with Jim Peterick and I was at his house in, in, uh, in Illinois. And he has this beautiful piano that, that uh, was in this kind of like sunken living room thing. Yeah. And um, so we're, we're having lunch and uh, I look over and, 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 you know, Jimbo's like, you know, how you doing? You know, I said, what a beautiful piano. And he goes, did you play it? And I went, no, <laughs> he goes, well, come on. So we, so we go in and we sit at the piano and he goes, you know, this is the piano that I wrote the searches over on, Ooh. you know? <laughs> now I said to him, I said, wow. I said, you know, it's really funny. I said, I, one of my, when I was a kid, I said, I sang in a talent show that song, the searches over in one first place, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and he goes, well, here's how I wrote it. And he starts playing it on, on the piano and then he starts singing it. And then it, it gets to where the, you know, the, the, uh, the bridge of, mm -hmm. of the song, now the mouse, you know, stretched out behind me, loves that I've lost. Yeah. And he's, he's like, you know, take it, Brian. <laughs> so <laughs> I start singing it and I'm getting all emotional. Because, I'm sure you were, you know, here I am sitting at the piano that the song was written on by the guy who wrote it in the house of the guy that, you know, that wrote it, you know? Wow. So it, it was, it was very emotional, but after we did it, he stopped and, and he kind of like shook his head and he looked over at, at his wife and she was shaking her head. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, Oh shit, they didn't like it. You know? <laughs> but, um, and he goes, 
man, he goes, Bry, he goes, for a minute, you sounded like Jimmy. Oh, <laughs> now, he said for, for a minute there, you, you sounded like Jimmy. And I oh. went, wow. I said, what an honor. I yeah. mean, just to be told that, I mean, uh, wow. Yeah. You know, because I, I hold Jimmy Jameson in mm -hmm. high regard. He's, he's, he's my, he's my favorite vocalist. I mean, I, oh. I, you know, people have de debated who's better, who's this, and, and, and you can go Lou, Steve, Jimmy, you can down Steve Walsh, you can down a list of, oh, they're all, yeah, they're all, they're all they're, great. They're all like, kind of in their own great, but right. You know, we're all tenors we, too. Yeah, I mean, so you know, you're, you're looking at, you know, the vocal range, mm -hmm. um, and the vocal range that I've always gravitated to because I'm a tenor yeah. is, you know, our, our tenor, <laughs> our tenor yeah. singers, you know, up there, way up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, you know, um, that's why you know, growing up listening to Boston and Journey and Foreigner and and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it just it it just got me but but jimmy when i bought vital signs um <laughs> yeah. and i think i'm trying to remember because my my turntable at that time was weird like whenever you <laughs> hit it it would just randomly go to whatever song drop and, down the middle yeah yeah i mean and and that's what happened with journey infinity that's how i got to something to hide was the, the very first journey song i ever heard you know but um the uh this is what happens when you when you shop at zayers or something yeah exactly Bradley's. you know yeah i bought a lot of records at zayers by the way <laughs> but, I, and you know what? i purposely threw that out for the geezers in the crowd right oh if yeah shopping at oh, yeah zayer or zayers bradley's any of these stores that have uh gone away in zayers the was great zayers, zayers had a great record department. they did they and, they, uh, they absolutely did sears obviously but yeah, yeah. But yeah, they really did. But the, you know, the first song that I think I heard that was Survivor was, um, oh God, what was the name of it? Summer and Smoke, Diamonds and Dust. Uh, um, uh, okay, you you're losing me on that one too. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna come up with a title. This is gonna be. Uh, I keep talking. It's not gonna work for him though. But we're, we, have uh, to, we have to fill time. I forgot the name of it, but it was great. <laughs> I, I, and you'll remember when we're done, I'm sure. Yeah. It was the, you know, you know I yeah. do that all the time. It's brain fog. Yeah. It's aging brain fog. It is. Um, it is. So anyway, um, yeah, when Jimmy Jameson says something, or when Jim Peterick rather says something like that, um, it blows my mind. Like, and I had him on, and I, and I joke about this, and I had that interview I did with him, and he... He said, you know what's good about you? You know what you're talking about. And yeah. I, I just threw that at everybody. I was like, hey, you know what? Peter says I know what I'm talking about, so shut up. You know what I mean? He is, I, I, I'll tell you something. Um, I, I love I, that. I've been blessed to work with a lot of lot of cats in this business. And and man, Peter is, you know, <laughs> he is just brilliant. I mean- yeah. He had a hand in that really, new Chica really, that new Chicago really. record. Um, he co-wrote and he did a lot yeah. of stuff, I think, behind the scenes. And he, yeah. he gave me a little scoop on that. That's doing that's on AC radio. They're playing yeah. that single. And I'm just He's relentless when you work with him, too. Yeah. I mean, he does not, you know, and and Jimbo, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> relentless. <laughs> but, uh, Perfectionist. Yeah, he, yeah. he is relentless when you when you work with him. But he is you know he has a vision you know what i mean right, and right. he you know he he can talk the talk and walk the walk you know he's um he's phenomenal yeah and what a great songwriter and and uh just a great person yeah and don't let's not forget the ides of march right <laughs> oh i know right Vehicle? and i had no idea and, and i'm almost <laughs> ashamed to say this publicly but i had no idea who they were yeah. I mean, I knew the song. I didn't know that was, I didn't know that was him on lead vocals. I didn't either. I did not know because his voice obviously is, is a bit different now, but right. the, he says to me, you know, I was just trying to be David Clayton Thomas. And I was like, uh, whoa, I'm yeah. like, dude, I mean, I could, yeah. I could sit there. We could, you, me and him, we could probably talk. I'd just sit there and listen. I'd be like, shut me up. Cause I just want to take it all in. Give me, give me all the vibes, you know? 
because that him saying that it's like BS and T are all over the radio and they come along with this song horn driven band. And they're like, you know, we want to be blood, sweat and tears on this track. And it's, it's a phenomenal track. It, it It's like a better BS and T than them. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I, I mean, it is, uh, it's one of those songs that I think I, I'm, I, you know, I probably heard it growing up and just didn't think anything of it. I right, thought, you know, right. it was like Chicago, you know yeah. what I mean? Or, or, or <laughs> Let's Win Tears. But, I, you know, I, I was watching, what was it the, the Stallone movie, Lock Up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was in that movie. Oh, you know, wow. they were working on a car. They were like fixing up an old car. And that song, I'm your vehicle, baby. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, there's Jimbo, you know. It's just crazy. And he yeah. sounds, you know, it's great. He sounds great as a vocalist these days. It's like his voice has aged nicely. When and he's he like, sings, he's a hell of a guitar player, too. You yeah. know, yeah, he probably really is. A Pride lot of, of Lions. Don't know that about him, you know. Yeah, well, he's a jack of, of all trades and he master is. of most of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and he knows what he wants. And, and the beauty about him also and and uh sorry to get off on a on a jim peterick uh tangent yeah tangent here but we'll just make this video jim peterick the man the myth, the <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. you know yes. a tribute to jim peterick yes. you know chain um, reaction and jim peterick. and jim peterick yes <laughs> um but you know jim can uh, and i learned this as a, as a producer that when you can hum a melody to something, you know, like a guitar solo or a, or a riff or, or melody, whatever. If, if you can hum that or go to the keyboard and play it, it really helps out who, whoever it was. I was, when I was at his, at his studio, we were working on something and, and um, the artist had, had asked me to, to play a guitar solo on the, on, on the song. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm coming up with whatever I'm feeling at the time. And, um, that's a lie. Just every time I pick the guitar up, I try to be Dan Huff and I'm, and I never will be, but you know, um, but the, uh, I, I just remember Jim going, okay, here's what I'm hearing. And he, he walks over to the piano and he just starts playing this series of notes and I'm going, Oh my God, that's like beautiful. <laughs> I mean, and, and, you know, and he's playing it and I'm, I'm playing what he's playing and, and he doesn't just play the notes. He, he puts so much feeling in it, you know? So, uh, well, yeah, it, 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 it's, I, I love producers that can do that. And I, and as a producer myself, I, I, I try and bring that to the table where I can either hum something or I can grab a guitar or I can grab a keyboard and, and play what I'm trying to convey. Right. Um, you know, to, uh, to whoever's doing the part. So, well, to tie, let's try to tie this together now with all of that sort of musicality there with all that love of, you know, bands like survivor and the eighties scene. Um, honestly, chain reaction is going to be a treat for people who want to go out because they're not going to get just one band. It is get, um, a whole bunch of, does your set list change every time you go out or how do you, Not how do you do really, that? Um, we have several different set lists that, that are very similar. Um, but we, we cater it to number one, if it's, if, if you're playing in a club where people want to get up and dance, obviously you're going to gravitate to a certain material that, that calls for that. If, if it's more of a concert atmosphere, mm -hmm where it's at a theater or uh, an amphitheater or, uh, you know, something like that, or even like a festival, um, we, we have the set list geared to that. Mm -hmm. So it varies that way. And then also it varies on the length of the show. Sometimes we only play for, you know, an hour and a half, you know, right, so right. we have a set list for an hour and a half. And right. then other times we'll play between two and three and a half hours, wow. you know. Wow. And it just, it's, I mean, boom, 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 boom. It's like a freight train. How's your voice? It holds up okay? It does, yeah. I, I think it's, I, I you know, the, the voice is, uh, it, it's a it's it's a love-hate relationship is what it is. <laughs> um, because when it's when it's firing on, on all eight cylinders, it's your best friend. Yeah. Um, when it's, when it's not, you, you just go, 
really did you have to pick today to yeah. be tired you know whatever yeah. so I, I really um i try to take the best care <laughs> of my voice um <laughs> i love cigars um i'm a i'm a big cigar smoker yeah. um i love a good cigar um but other than that i i really don't do anything that um really is harmful to my voice or anything you know um I, I just really, I think it's just from doing it for so many years and knowing when to rest right? Sure. and knowing when not to. Yeah. I, I think you have to listen to your body. Oh, and, yeah. and, I, and I say that to all the singers that are out there that, that may be listening to this, just take care of your voice. Um, muscle memory, it's a muscle. Yeah. So it's like anything else. When you go to the gym and you work out, you know, the, the, the more you work out, the stronger you get. And um, same thing with uh, with the vocals and even playing guitar, you know, it's yeah. muscle memory. Right. Know? Right. Just keep playing and, and you'll get stronger and and uh, and all that. Absolutely. But yeah, I, I, I really uh, I feel so blessed to uh, to be a part of Chain Reaction and, and the Chain Reaction family. You know what I mean? Because it is it's outstanding. I mean, it, it really is. And, and I, and I love those guys and um, I wish they could all be on here with me, you know um, but we'd probably just laugh and joke around the whole time. So nothing would really get accomplished. You right. Know? Via but, a zoom meeting for a bunch of guys that just want to talk about all kinds of crazy stuff, which yeah. is good, which is good as well. We, you and I do that. So, I mean, Hey, yeah. um, we're just letting some of the people see it and uh, you know, they can, watch it hopefully um it's, so it's a blast and i and i hope right. and, and you know if you if, for those people that that do you know follow us on facebook there and you know. and all that because honestly if you can't be there th there's always like videos that are being posted from yeah. the shows so you can get little snippets and and things like that and um hopefully um hopefully you you, you enjoy that and and who knows maybe you want to come and see a show and now, geographically speaking, where is Scottsdale Fire Hall? Where is that like located? It's in Scottsdale, Pennsylvania, and that's all I know. <laughs> that's is really it close? All I know. Close to Pittsburgh? Close? Yeah. To well, it's. I, I want to say it is roughly, according to my GPS, it's about an hour. Okay. From, uh, it, it's about an hour from from Pittsburgh. So city Google Pittsburgh. GPS Scottsdale Fire Hall seven dollar tickets. Chain yeah. Reaction. Brian Cole, great, great vocalist, great, decent guy, as you can all see here, uh, and really loves music and is passionate about keeping this stuff alive and, and also uh, doing justice to the material, which I think is, is really important. Well, I think that, and I appreciate you saying those kind words, I, uh, you know, I, honestly, it's, it's, it's the fans that give me the, the juice to, to be able to do that. You know, they're, it, nothing brings me more joy than looking out and seeing the faces of, of people that, that you can tell really appreciate it. We come out and do, you know, in my dreams by doc. And, nice. and, and, and as soon as you hit those, that the, the opening harmonies, it's like, people are going, Oh my God, I love that song. You know? Um, sorry. I sound like Dean for a second. Sorry, that's, Dean. That's okay. Dean, Dean would appreciate that probably. Although he, you know, He's, he's a little low energy. I don't know. Maybe. Dean? Oh, yeah. Maybe sure. we can wake him up a little bit. Um, yeah. To, you know, I mean, he sees Dean... this. <laughs> God bless Dean. Dean, uh, Dean. Dean's having a blast. He's out. He's out on the road with the boys again. So um, just so. And they're it... playing with Journey, man. It's, it's, we're going to crown him, man. You're going to get kind of see him in a playoff and play the drums every night. Man, they are now singing his ass off. Man, it's incredible. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> oh man that's so good that's so good see that was worth the whole video so if anyone stayed right <laughs> do not hate end, me for doing that i yes. love you man don't hate me for we that. both love him man we yes. I mean, he's keeping it alive i saw yes. he's on billboards where i live for this for this biosphere back thing it says it's it's like he got this and he must have got this endorsement he didn't tell me he's like um you know because he had all the back issues and stuff sure. so I think they cured him, but, um, oh, good. yeah, but uh, it's, it's good to see, you know, you're driving down the road to Fort Myers. And it's like, Hey, it's his journey's drummer. And it's got Dean and he's on this go. Oh, that's so cool. And I'm like, wow. Um, he's, he's big shot. So, um, 
All right, let's wrap it up because, you know, people have ADD, including yours truly. And um, I really appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you. reaction this weekend. Follow them on Facebook. They got swag in the swag store. So go grab yourself some chain reaction gear so you can show your support for the band. Uh, these bands, obviously, you guys aren't selling albums, so you got to sell gear and you got to um, book concerts and hopefully sell them out. So yes. best of luck to you, Brian, Thank and you. the rest of the crew. Thank you so much. All right. That's our interview with Brian Cole, everybody, from Chain Reaction.